What is up, everyone? Welcome to Denny Geek Presents Marvel Standom Special Edition. We're taking a quick break from our usual MCU panel discussions for another exclusive, and I might add awesome, interview from the world of Marvel Comics. See, back at New York Comic Con, I caught up with Tochi Onyabuchi, the writer of the Sam Wilson-focused Captain America Symbol of Truth, as well as Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing, writers of the Steve Rogers-focused Captain America Sentinel of Liberty. These two parallel Captain America books are awesome. You absolutely need to check them out. For the moment, Symbol of Truth feels kind of like the big, almost, you know, anything can happen superhero energy that I usually associate with 80s and 90s Captain America comics, which I might add are my favorite Captain America comics, not written and or drawn by Jack Kirby. So this is high praise. And Sentinel of Liberty is kind of mining some more, uh, you know, Winter Soldier-esque, everything you thought you knew is wrong vibes. And they're both great. Seriously, like it is a good time to be a Captain America fan. And even if you only know these characters from the movies, both of the first issues of these books, and I do recommend you read both of these comics, they're both perfect jumping on points. Like I'm always looking for ways to make fans of the MCU into fans of Marvel comics as well. And I got to say, these are books that do that. They get right to the heart of like why there need to be two different Captain Americas. They get right to like setting them off on adventures that are unique to both of these characters that speak to both of these characters the way they need to be spoken to. And I just keep saying it, they're great fun. So not only in this interview does this team of writers break down all the cool stuff happening in both of their comics, but they also tease next year's Captain America Cold War event. So there are some minor spoilers in this interview if you're not all the way up to speed with these comics. But really, I don't know, the spoilers aren't so bad. I think it should just make you want to go check out both Sam and Steve's new Cap Adventures. So here are the writers of Captain America Sentinel of Liberty and Captain America Symbol of Truth to tell you all about it. What I like about these books is that there's kind of two tracks to them. And these two tracks mirror kind of everything that I like about Captain America comics. Like on the one hand, Symbol of Truth is kind of like the globe hopping, but also anything can happen element of Cap Comics. It reminds me of like the Mark Grunewald stuff from the 80s and 90s that I grew up loving so much. You know, it's like you're just kind of like playing with the action figures. Right? Oh, yeah, no, and I'm a huge fan personally of spy thrillers. So I was like, oh, you're giving me a Cap book? Yeah, we're going we're going places. Yeah. We're, we're putting stamps in the passport. Yeah, it's like you like Latveria, Wakanda, you know. And, oh, yeah. And then there's more coming with issue six. Oh, yes. So, yeah, like, so I really appreciate that. But then Sentinel of Liberty feels like the like other great cap runs like there's a lot of brubaker there with like this is the book that's gonna like reveal things that you didn't know about cap and his world it also felt really important for us to take that uh that look at steve rogers as a man rather than uh you know captain america as a symbol especially now that it is very much a shared symbol who is Steve behind all of that? What can he go back to? Which to me is some of the best stuff about say the Grunewald run or the Mark Wade runs where it was all about really embracing who this guy was underneath the cowl. So that's been a really fun part uh, for us to play with as well. And the neat thing is um, as much as Tochi's run is looking at the kind of spy thriller as like a global experience, we're really looking at the spy thriller as a, as a, a dive into the conspiracy, right? We're like going deep. You're going, you have the breadth. We have the depth. Together, we make one cogent, wonderful Captain America universe. So what are, I mean, just what are your particular uh, Captain America run influences for your for your respective books? Or if you're pulling stuff from elsewhere in pop culture, I'd love to hear about that too. Oh my goodness. I Well, so a funny thing that I sometimes do is I, I hop on YouTube and I watch trailers for movies. There'll be like action thrillers like Body of Lies with Leo DiCaprio. They're like movies like that just with lots of explosions and just like really cool cuts and everything. I actually watched the Winter Soldier trailer a ton yeah. as part of my inspiration for a lot of the action set pieces for Symbol of Truth. And so for me, it's a lot of very visual uh, influences. But what's also really cool about... Uh, writing symbol of truth is that 
I basically get to help create Sam Wilson's canon. Like there isn't a whole bunch to draw from. That's my job is to make that so that future writers way down the line have something to draw on as inspiration for their own interpretations of where to take Sam Wilson. I promise I'll get back to you guys in no, one please. second, yeah, but I know I just got to go off We also like that. listening to Tochi talk. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a win-win. It's nice because I like talking about myself. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's really a shame that these guys don't like each other because, yeah. you know. Yeah, a lot of strife. Can't the stand them. Can't yeah, stand them. Yeah. Real, real rough time. <laughs> but you kind of touch on that that element of like there isn't a lot of Sam canon. You touch on that in the conversation that he has with T'Challa. Is it in issue four or five? Uh, issue issue five, they really, it all sort of hangs out. Yeah, yeah. So I thought that was really interesting where it's like there's a strength of character that it takes to be Captain America that they both share, but they couldn't be more different, you know? Oh, yeah. And they're both coming from very different experiences being black people in the world. You know, Sam Wilson grew up in Harlem, very tough, you know, early life and everything. As someone who comes from that background, you can look at a place like Wakanda and see this titanic unfairness happening. Like Wakanda has literally everything, the most technologically advanced uh, nation in the entire world. And then you look at the world immediately around you and you're like, okay, why do they get to have what they have? And why do we only get to have what we have. And so when you have these two superheroes that embody these concepts so both intimately and powerfully, and you get to throw them together in a blender and have them punch each other, I was like, <laughs> yo, I, ha I have to do this. I have, to, and I have to do this in the very first run because we are setting the tone for what Symbol of Truth is going to be. Best moment of your run so far. Oh man, I'm so proud of it. I am so proud of it. I feel like anytime we get into a like territory with character where it's like, well, everything you thought you knew is wrong, there's always a chance that that, that, that is also not true. So. Yeah, well, and, and I think, moreover, the minute that you start to build in a bunch of like retcon into a character, um, you start to unravel what people love about the character, you start to unravel uh, important stories to the character, and we're giant Captain America nerds who did not want to do that, right? Yeah. We've read every... Captain America issue, you know, since we were children, we went back and reread all of it when we got the gig. Like, a big part of this is us trying to take all of that and synthesize it into something that still makes sense. To reveal something to you that you didn't know was there, that the symbol isn't what you think it is. That this symbol, which has never had real meaning ascribed to it, and which people have been arguing about the meaning of since Cap was around. Is it the symbol of America? Is it the symbol of Captain America? Is it the symbol of the American dream? Is it, well, what is this symbol? And the first thing we did when we sat down on this book was we said, well, let's look at that symbol the way that somebody like Jonathan Hickman would look at that symbol. And let's say everything in that symbol has meaning. Every ring in that circle has meaning. Every point of that star has meaning. Every color in that symbol has meaning. If Steve doesn't know that meaning and gets to learn that. And that starts to pull out a whole secret history that underlies Steve. It doesn't take away any of Steve's adventures, doesn't replace any of Steve's adventures, but hopefully it illuminates Steve's adventures and gives us new story territory for a character who, frankly, has been on the story runway for a very long time. If we can carve new story territory, building new characters, new ideas, as Tochi introduces Sam to the whole Marvel universe, it was time to introduce Steve to a whole new universe. And that's really where the Outer Circle came from. And it's the tricky thing, or not even the tricky thing, the exciting thing is to not be retconning previous canon, but to illuminate it and to uplift it. Like, add things to the past that don't, don't cut it down, but say yes and to all the amazing stories that have happened in the past. Which, of course, is now destroying his relationship with Bucky Barnes. Like, you know, he talk about, like, oh, like, Sam, uh, Sam Wilson and T'Challa are going to get in a fight. It's like, yeah, Steve and Bucky are also going to get into a big fight. There's kind of a, a bros having fights uh, theme going on in Captain America. Uh, Thematic right resonance. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there very much is. Well, and Peggy. And Peggy. And Peggy. And we're just getting started with Peggy. Uh, Peggy was one of those characters who I think is really, just truthfully, is interesting because she doesn't have... A ton, she doesn't have a ton of canon. She has a lot of canon in the headspace of moviegoers, right? But her canon really has been like off the table for a long time and then was brought back in by Ta-Nehisi Coates and, and, and made relevant again through this idea that she's still around and she's dryad, she has the Daughters of Liberty and she has a sort of uh, position of like some amount of sort of authority in the shadows, right? Which is an interesting character to have, but it still puts her at a, essentially the same level as Sharon Carter and as Misty Knight and as Black Widow, and like she doesn't have a lot of her own story territory. She's just kind of like 
one also, of the also there. Yeah, she is a cool spy lady, but it's like no, she needs to be her own person. And so a big part of what we wanted to do immediately was say, all right, how do we use what we're doing with Steve and Bucky, and what we're revealing with the Outer Circle? to start pulling Peggy into a totally new role. And that's one where she's not the most likable person in the room, where she doesn't need you to like her, where she doesn't need you to play by her rules at all, and that she's gonna start uh, operating with a different moral compass than we're used to um, you know, a superhero or a spy character operating as, because Peggy isn't the like, she's not Captain Carter. She's Peggy Carter, and she's lived 100 years and done a lot of dark stuff. And we and just like with Bucky, we want to illuminate what a century of trauma like that looks like. I don't think anybody lives 100 years and isn't, like, somebody who does dark stuff. This is the entire yeah. point <laughs> of the Outer Circle. And, like, and like I, seriously, uh, Captain America and the Winter Soldier, uh, the special that we announced pretty recently that we're doing with Kev Walker, comes after Cap 6, is all about that. The entire point of that book is, like, Live a hundred years, become a supervillain. Like it's not, yeah. it's just not going to happen. That it, it goes the other way. You each have one sentence, one sentence each, to tell me about Cold War, Captain America, Cold War, the upcoming crossover between your books. No press release stuff, please. A uh, a thrilling adventure. <laughs> a not a no press release stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yes, and yeah. <laughs> big Ian Rogers story. That's the big wow. thing. The big news is that Deep we're going to be, yeah, we're yeah. going to be pulling in. Obviously, was introduced in Tochi's run. It's going to be coming back. We're going to be telling a big story. Uh, Sam Wilson's effectively first partner, one of his best friends, Steve Rogers' son. What kind of trouble can this get into? It's actually going to be very calm. They get dessert. That was all one sentence. Uh, <laughs> and and, it, and it's true. A lot they of do. Commas. Actually, that's I think the first legitimate spoiler we've ever given about Cold War. They get dessert. Every thread in both books tied together and paid off. I'm gonna regret saying that, but I genuinely think it's true. I would say, oh, and it can't be press releasey because I had a really clever thing to say too. I was like, for a Cold War, it's pretty hot. Yes! <laughs> I'll accept it. Thank you! <laughs> Kobe! <laughs> I'll accept it. <laughs> Fellas, thank you so much. This is a riot. The books are great. Looking forward to forward to more from Symbol of Truth and Sentinel of Liberty and, of course, Cold War. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank you very so much. much. Cheers. Shields up! And that is it for this episode of Marvel Standom Special Edition. Make sure you're subscribing to us wherever you're watching or listening right now. And do check out our live home at twitch.tv slash TV and hit up denegeek.com slash Marvel for all our awesome Marvel coverage as well. Now, we will be back doing live episodes on December 1st, and you'll be able to watch and ask questions live on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. So don't miss it. Make sure you're following at Marvel Standom on Twitter and Instagram. They'll get you all the tune in details. And you can also drop us a line and let us know your burning questions and what you want us to cover in upcoming episodes. So here are the upcoming episodes of Marvel Standom. You're not going to want to miss them. We are hitting our best moments of MCU phase four on December 1st. Then come back on December 8th as we break down the worst moments of MCU phase four. And if you've been watching these shows for a while, you know we have some pretty strong opinions about this stuff. Then on December 15th, it is the annual Marvel Standom Christmas quiz. And Kirsty has promised to make my life a living hell with impossible questions. So don't forget, we also have a DC show. So check out DC Standom when you can on all major podcast platforms. Thanks to our producer, Andrew Halley. He is the best there is in any corner of the multiverse. And a special shout out to Michael R. for making the podcast version of this show all it can be. If you are only listening to this show, don't forget to check us out on those video platforms, folks. You're missing out. You can have fun with us live. It's a good time. But this has been Marvel Standom on the Den Geek Network. Until next time, remember, folks, we stand together.